I'm Mark Greenstein. I'm the director of Ivy Bound, and I wanted to give over for the first time my bad pages. One per test. That might be math, it might be grammar, it might be reading. This time, May 2017. If you have that test, please break it out. We're going to section three. The last five questions, grid ins, you can expect that. Hard, but not really hard. Especially if you've learned well what we've been teaching for these many weeks. Here we go. Number 16. Number 16 looks really weird. It's throwing constant in, in two places. Yet, you don't need that word to do the math. The math subjects itself to the difference of two squares. And we bring this up early in the algebra lesson. You've got to memorize it. The difference of any two perfect squares means a subtraction of one square from another square always yields the same result. If you start with a squared minus b squared, the result is a plus b times a minus b. Now look at how they've asked. They give you an A, they give you a B, that if multiplied is A squared, sorry, is X minus 4 times X plus 4. That falls into the difference of two squares perfectly. So when they go and ask for A times B, it really is X plus 4 times X minus 4. Let's set that up as an equation. Because now they're telling you that A times B is in the form x squared minus c. Don't get freaked out about that. Don't. It's in a form that you will just write out and let's see what happens. x squared minus c equals a b. That means x squared minus 16 equals x plus 4 times x minus 4. That minus 16 is your multiplication of 4 times negative 4. Now we have a nice equation, x squared minus c equals a b. And c is then standing for 16. I have another way to think that if you were guessing, there's really only two decent numbers to guess here. Only two, 0 and 16. What else are they going to do with this? There's really no manipulation that they're asking you to do. Now, lest you thought, well, maybe the answer is 4 or negative 4. Well, how could one be right and not the other? Because these are balanced. There's really no distinction between A and B. So they're saying, what is the, the one value of C? I wouldn't pick 4 or negative 4. You got to take a guess. 16 is a pretty good one. 0 is not a terrible guess when you're dealing with grid ins, but uh, this gets you home better. Now let's go to number 17. It's a word problem. It's a classic, turning two English sentences into easy math. Rings sell for $50. Necklaces sell for $30. You could write out R equals 50, N equals 30 to help keep that straight. The real equation is that Isabella sold 25 pieces of necklaces and rings. In a total, 1050. That yields two equations. First one is the easy one. R plus N equals 25. Please write it down. Next, the price times the number of R's plus the price times the number of N's equals 1050. Let's turn that into math. 50R plus 30N equals 1050. Now you have two equations and two unknowns. This is very solvable, your choice of substitution or lineup. Since substitution is very quick here, that was my method. I chose, since I'm looking for n, to get rid of the r. r will get wiped out. r is 25 minus n. Plug that into the first equation. That means that 50 times 25 minus n, that's the r, plus 30n 
equals 1050. Distribute, you end up with 1250 minus 50n plus 30n is 1050. And a little subtraction gets you 20n equals 200 and n alone equals 10. How many necklaces did she sell? Must be 10. Now I want to talk about smart guessing, just in case you weren't sure that your answer felt good. 10 is a reasonable number. Let me give you a few unreasonable numbers. Let me give you a few unreasonable numbers. 26. Because the whole thing only totaled 25. Anything above 25 cannot be right. How about n equals negative 4? Algebraically, that's possible with two equations and two unknowns, but not in the real world do you have a negative necklace. And not in the SAT world of grid-ins can you ever have a negative number. Grid-ins are either zero or positive, always. All right, let's go to number 18. Here is, I think, the easiest one on the page. Make sure you distribute properly. The 1.2 needs to get distributed to both the H and the 2. But it gives you a left side of 1.2H plus 2.4 is... 2h minus 1.2. Combine like terms. 3.6 is on one side. 0.8h .8 h is on the other. Solve for h by dividing both sides by 0.8. Now you have 3.6 over 0.8. Now I know you don't have a calculator. You're getting used to it though. Okay, the decimals wipe out. So it's like saying 36 over 8. And that actually would be an acceptable grid in right there. If you want to reduce it, it would reduce down to 9 halves. But the SAT will take 36 over 8 if you didn't reduce it. All right, let's go to number 19. Probably the hardest one on the page. I wasn't sure what to do. But I do know that radical signs are not friendly answers, especially when this is a grid in. And a radical sign can't be part of the answers. It's impossible, right? Grid-ins only take digits. So for either reason, it makes sense to get rid of the radical sign. How? Well, it's a cube root. So we get rid of it by cubing, multiplying it by itself and by itself again, taking it, in other words, to the third power. Got to be fair. Do it to both sides. So, when you cube the left side, the house comes off, you have a clean 9R over 2. On the right side, you move to 1 eighth R cubed. So your equation should now look like 9R over 2 equals 1 eighth R cubed. Let's solve for that. To get rid of the fraction there, to get rid of that fraction, we could multiply both sides by 8. That wipes out the 1 8th, giving you r cubed alone, and it puts you at 36r on the other side. So 36r equals r cubed. Divide both sides by r, and r squared is 36. That's a perfect square. You know the square root of 36 is 6. That is your answer. Last one. It is so good if you will recognize Pythagorean triplets. These are the triangles that the SAT comes to love. And look, on the final question, supposedly hard, watch how easy this is by just recognizing this is a 3, 4, 5. It's disguised with some slightly different proportions, but the one on the longest side is the equivalent to the 5. The 0.8 that they give you on the middle side is like, point four, is like 4. So when you have a 5 and a 4, your final piece should be 3. Pythagoras knew that centuries ago. You knew it now. This is instead of 3, though, proportionately, this is 0.6. You, instead of a 3, 4, 5 triangle, you have a 6, 8, 10. And technically, you have a 
0 0.6, 0.8, 1.0. Now let's answer the question. 0 0.6 is your radius. Do not fill in 0.6 because they didn't ask for radius. They asked for diameter. Diameter is double the radius. That, ladies and gentlemen, is 1.2. Hope this has been helpful. Good luck with section four.